Cher Antoinette Corbin, a writer, a painter, and a creator of wearable art. She's often described as a Renaissance woman. We'll talk with her up next on Carib Nation. Hello, welcome to Carib Nation. I'm Doris Dean. My guest today is Cher Antoinette Corbin. She is a Barbadian artist. She has written a few books. She creates wearable art. And she has done a number of paintings about the Caribbean and cultural art across the Caribbean. Thank you so much for joining us, Cher Antoinette. Welcome to Carib Nation. Tell me a little bit about how you have managed with the coronavirus. Uh, well, thank you for having me, Darius. Um, it's been quite an interesting experience because it was the creation of a new normal, um, something that we have never, ever seen before. I mean, we are a small island. You can sit at night and have your door open. You can walk freely wherever you choose. There are no issues. You know, everybody in Barbados, you greet each other, you hug and you kiss them. And it's like, now, you know, you're kind of like, oh dear, all right, we can't do that. You know, kind of thing. And that in a sense is a little off-putting. However, I think because we are very much in tune with what we know health-wise we need to do, it was quite, it was quite amazing to see how quickly um, entrepreneurs got in on making the cloth masks. I mean, I even sat down and I made like seven, eight of them for my family that first weekend because my son still had to go to work and, and things like that. And um, we've really, everybody has really, you know, drawn the line, came, come in line. And as a result of that, I mean, I was on lockdown from March the 28th. And right now we have been at least a full month of not having any new cases. So Barbados, we flattened the curve fairly quickly. Every supermarket, every, every business place you go into, everybody you now uses the thermal, the thermal scans. Um, and if your temperature is too high, they're not letting you in. You can't go in unless you have a mask. You know, so, I mean, it is, it is, it's become the new normal. You don't, when you're leaving your house now, the last thing you do, you check to see if you've got your mask in your bag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But um, I think all in all, um, we, coming out of this, a lot of systems have had to change. And we know we cannot revert to what was going on before. And I think we, we, we have a government in place right now that was very proactive and, you know, I'm not partisan one way or the other, but you have to admire what they were able to achieve in a very, very short space of time. And we all are very grateful for it because we, our families have had, are, have been safeguarded and it is only if you decide you're going to go outside the protocols that you're going to be in danger. The protocols are sufficient and that, you know, that, that makes me feel good as a scientist, you know. And, yeah, uh, you know, and also too because the prime minister was at school with me, so it's like, yeah, you know, <laughs> <I'm not. laughs> your girl. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but other than that, um, I think we are still learning. It is a, it is a work in progress. It is a development, and we are trying to do everything we can. And I will tell you, those who break the protocols. We've jailed a few people already, so really, we're not. No, we're not taking it like you're serious. Yes, very much so. Yes. So, yes. Um, yeah. So, so we're all right. So, how has um, coronavirus affected your art? Has it caused you to think differently about your art? Um, what I would say, uh, to be really honest, it's kind of 
put a bit of a damper in the mm. sense that um, prior to the lockdown, there were a few projects that I wanted to start exploring, especially with my visual art, um, which would require me to, um, you know, travel around Barbados, oh, take yeah. photos of different types, things like that. Um, so that, that kind of a, a full stop was put in that right away. I think, yeah. yeah. And um, just prior to um, COVID, I brought out a whole line of what I called my vintage inspired um, jewelry. May I please oh. come right here right now? Right? Yeah. Um, where, where my artwork is actually set in the piece in the there. And I the see. gems and everything, um, all Ooh. the wire work, I do all of that. Because a lot, of vintage, a lot of vintage jewelry is, are, is, is done as links. Uh, you know, they have stones and then there's a metal link and a stone. Right, right, right. I so see. I brought a whole series of this stuff. And it's like, well, okay, COVID hit now. You can't come back out to the table with the same thing yeah. that you to this. So yeah. like now over the next, uh, hopefully by July, I would have a new thought process as to what I want to create, you know, because I you got to, you got to step out fresh as we would yes, say. Yes, you know, yes, yes. Can't wear yes. the old clothes no more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, new challenges, that's for sure. Yes, exactly. You know, yes. so, so, um, but, but all in all, for me, it was very educational. At some points, it was really um, emotional. Um, I would say, all in all, I was very grateful because when you think of persons who you have a small home and you have six or seven people that have to stay in that one space. Yeah. So under normal circumstances, you may have the parents or the older people going back and forth to school and to work, and everybody's kind of like passing each other, you know, ships in the breeze kind of thing. Right. But right. like, ain't no way to go now. Yes. Right. And, They're all um, together. Yeah. And our government was very conscious of the whole problems with mental illness mm. and domestic abuse. Mm -hmm. So they were, they were, you know, doing all the public service um, um, announcements to try to get people, you know, if you need help, don't be afraid, use your WhatsApp, contact somebody. That Very did, good. Uh, you know, so we, there were a lot of support services that came on board that not came on board. They were always there, but they were more visible. And activated more. Yeah. And active, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. Of, of what was going on. Um, writing wise, honestly, I have not written in about three years to per se. Oh. I think my, my words have now been translated to my canvas. I you know, know. I, I am, I'm painting what I feel where before I was writing what I, what I was feeling. Mm -hmm. Um, I've said, I actually this year I had said I wanted to start writing again, but then COVID hit. <laughs> so I, I may um, try to put some pen to paper again, you know, coming out to the end of the year. Mm -hmm. But um, then I'm also dealing with work and the office and hopefully next 18 months I'm retiring so I can do oh, all wow. my art full time. You'll be doing all the artwork. Fantastic. Let's go back and, and talk a little bit about your background um, okay. and how you got started um, and transitioning from, because I know you, you work as a scientist. Talk a little bit about what was your interest as a young person, what led you into the, the job that you hold and how you partnered that with art over time. Okay, well, um, you know, growing up, um, my grandfather, he, he always had paintings in his house. And, and um, I think because I was always a loner as a child, I, you know, I had my coloring books and I, you know, I, I always had things to work with. I was very interested in art in secondary school, but at that time, the school curriculum was not as flexible as we would like it, would have liked it to be, not like, like how it is now. Yeah. So you went into one stream or the other. And science uh, was yeah. my first love. So I had no choice. I, I, I went the route of, of science. But then again, with science, you, the various areas of science, you know, botany and so on, you still have that visual and that beauty of things that you can see. So it was always there, okay? Mm -hmm. 
Fast forward quickly, you know, like two marriages, two children, two divorces later, one really bad relationship that fast forward about 20 something, 30 years. <laughs> Look at your face. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot, right? Um, I, a point came where I decided I needed to do what I wanted to do for me. And because I was always interested in art, I know, again, with social media and YouTube and, you know, teaching you how to, you know, you use this brush for this and this brush for that. Being a scientist, I approached it very, very methodically. Not like how uh, maybe a regular artist will just go by the paint, get the brush, get the canvas, and they do what they have to do. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. You should yeah. see the amount of tools that I got. Mm. Haven't used half of them up to this point, but no, I must have my tool. <laughs> must do it right. Yeah, let's yeah, do my, it right. You know? My husband was a scientist. I understand fully. <laughs> Thank you. So um, doing that, and then um, I had a lot of mentors um, coming through, um, Neville Legall and the people from the, from the various art, like Barbie's Arts Council and so on. And I got to a stage where I realized um, I needed to paint what I wanted. Um, you know, they say imitation is the greatest form of flattery. Mm -hmm. When you're a young artist, you think that you need to conform to what others are doing because oh, they're yeah. the ones that have the name, they're the ones the artist is selling and so on and so forth. And I was, you know, so, hey, Charles Drew, I painted the child houses. <laughs> I, did the, I did the landscapes. <laughs> You know, I did the whole Barbadiana, you know, yeah. you know, which is not bad, but, but then, I mean, everybody's well, it's, doing that. It's recorded, that's the important thing, it's, it's, it's recorded, once there's something, yeah. you have something to show Bar Barbadiana. Yeah, and so, you know, it's, and, it's, and, nothing is ever wasted. I'm very tongue-in-cheek, I say to myself, I, I tell people, well, how many times can you paint the Brock at Bathsheba, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that one rock. <laughs> Actually, ironically, I say that and I laugh at myself because the picture right here behind you is the rock at Bathsheba with the bathtub. <laughs> so I did it. I said, yeah, okay, yeah, or I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll just do it and get, get over it. Um, but then I started to try to do acrylic fluid art, mixed media, you know, and um, I found that people started to pay attention mm. because it was different. Uh, okay. Um, so... I know what needs to be done now. I need to spend the time to push and do the promotion. And that has to be done on the social media platform. Yeah. That takes a lot of time. Yes. Yeah. And when you're doing a full-time job, it's yeah. really hard to do that. You end up with no sleep. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I mean, what, what I found when I was making the jewelry is that I hardly slept, you know, it's that you come in, you take a nap, and you go at your work table, and you're there at 2 o'clock in the morning. Because yeah. Because persons aren't interested in the process of making the jewelry they just want the finished product yeah yeah you know but what i would say is is that if you have a passion for something and it is very deeply rooted in your heart you know you find a way to do it and that's what that's I'm true continuing. very true that's what i'm continuing to do and i think it is important for persons who are interested in art for them to understand that Art is your emotions that you're putting in a physical form. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's really no right or wrong way to do it. You know, and your and right. I think, yeah. And I think what is, what was great for me because I did not learn art academically. I did not have a lot of things to unlearn. I, 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 there were boxes that I, that I was placed mm. in. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Um, that being said, well, you know, as with everything, you know, you need to know what the rules are before you can break them. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so there's still various empirical and basic things that you have to yeah, learn, sure, from perspective yeah. and color wheel and various things like that. And, and, and you need to take the time to do that. Mm. Right. For me, I find I take a lot of time doing that because I need to be comfortable with it before I go into a project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I may take like something like three months before I even prepare to do a piece. You know, yeah. but, but, you know, Get I am usually happy right. with what, yeah, the, the art doesn't sell very quickly. Um, um, but when someone comes and say, well, I love that. And they write you a check and you're like, oh, okay, all right, I'll take it. You know, and, and it's something that may have been sitting there for like four years. 
yes. but it speaks to them. Yes, yes. And yes. the important thing with art, I keep telling everybody, my job is to evoke some form of emotion. It does not have to be that you like it. Sure. I just need you that when you walk away, that you're still thinking about it. Mm. You could be cussing me blind, don't care, but you're thinking about <laughs> it. Right, and um, and and really, truly, it the the beauty is in the be is in the eye of the beholder. Yeah. So, so. So you always had that interest in art, and um, yes. and you just had an opportunity to expand yeah. to be able to spend uh, the time to do it now. Yeah. Yes. So, but then, uh, but as you said, it was because it wasn't developed enough at the time of the Caribbean that led you to mm -hmm. what your job is and going yes. from a scientist. So. Is there anything in your work that mm -hmm. you think helps you with art as well? I as think a, in, in their scientific um, yeah, I tell think us a little primarily, bit about what you do to begin with. And, and, and oh, okay, um, I'm a forensic scientist. I'm right. the first forensic scientist that Barbados has ever had. Yeah, I wanted you to make sure that we we got that in there. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm presently the director of our national laboratory. And, um, you know, in forensic science, as with all sciences, it is a very disciplined, very systematic um, set of operations and SOPs that you follow. Mm -hmm. So, honestly, what that has probably done is led me to a lot of OCD where my art is concerned. You know, like the, I, I actually now have to teach myself to be more free flowing. Free, yeah, yeah. Than, than you know, being tight with everything. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that is interesting and a very happy process for me because when I tell myself, well, okay, you know, you're going to do this and just let it paint go, don't care where it goes, you know, it can go out of the light, doesn't matter. You know, it, it's, it's very empowering. Yes, I can imagine. And, and, and it has given me a level of growth that I am really appreciating. Mm -hmm. and changed your mindset, yes. Yeah, it's, it's mm -hmm. changed your mindset. Okay. I, however, um, I am not like some scientists. There's some scientists um, who try to, who literally want to translate what they do in their job to their artwork. I'm very compartmentalized where that's concerned. I, see. Right? I, I want nothing of forensics in my artwork, so you're not going to see any dead bodies, no limbs, no... <laughs> <laughs> no human forms. <laughs> well, I mean, I do love the human form anatomically, but but not to say that you know that there's anything, no crushing injuries, no nothing <laughs> like that. So yeah. So um, but I I do feel that the discipline of my job, um, and the administrative side of forensics has allowed me to really understand the business of art a lot better there are many things within the within um your art being successful it's not just about painting mm. i mean you can paint 24 hours a day but how are, how do you set up to sell it how are you going to get clients in um yeah um, do you know that you know um your pieces you have to have consistency in your pricing and how are you going right. to do that are, yeah. you, are you pricing per square inch are you pricing it emotionally because mm. your 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 title of piece is not going to be the same as somebody else's. I you really want to paint it, so obviously you think it's probably worth the five thousand dollars. You know, our credit comes in and goes, ah, nah, no, 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 <laughs> I, I would have <laughs> bought it for that. So then, you know, so it's, it's it's all things like that, like with the jewelry, the packaging, the the taking the photographs, the promotion, mm. the um, getting people to want to come and buy the piece. Yeah, you know, looking yeah. at your price point, like for me, mm -hmm. all of my pieces are, unless they're customized, are under a hundred Barbados dollars, which is under fifty Barbados dollars. Which people say, well, yeah, well, okay, I'm getting quality, I'm getting good value for money. Yes, yeah. yeah. You know? Um, and you know, you have to look at all those aspects. So I think running a department is allowing me to be able to understand how to run my business. All those pieces, I see. Yes, yes. Put those pieces in place. Yes, yes. Yeah. That makes That's sense. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, uh, forensic scientists in in Barbados, um, as you said, uh, that takes uh, quite some work, because yes. I'm sure that in the Caribbean you don't have a lot of of people in your position, so no, it's actually quite demanding. 
though let me let me um kind of burst your bubble a little bit in that <laughs> um in um in my department i have i have a staff of about 30 where about 19 or 20 of them are scientists Okay. And at least 12 of them are master's level scientists, master's level forensic oh, scientists. So, yeah, excellent. because I, because over the years, um, um, the that line of education has been supported been by whether yeah. it be um, national scholarships or whatever. I see. So yeah. the thing is now is that um, it's a matter of the government understanding that they need to put the money in for the equipment and the constant accreditations and upgrades and everything. Right. That's where the challenge will more lie. And hopefully for the staff not to leave because they're not feeling um, fulfilled or, uh -huh. or, you know, are challenged with the work that they're doing. But yeah. we've been doing a pretty good job so far with the limitations and supporting our judicial system. So, so. Oh, good. So essentially what you're telling me is that you have not been doing a lot of the painting You've been doing more jewelry, so you've yes, sort of parlayed year, into yeah. the jewelry side of it. Yeah, but I, but I, but I, but I have um, I have decided um, actually over the past two weeks that I want to segue back into painting and to paint bigger pieces because right ah. now my, my maximum size was a sixteen by twenty, which is sixteen inches by twenty inches, which is pretty right. really okay. But I want to challenge myself to pieces that are like three feet by four feet. You know, oh. like it, it will be a vestibule size investment. But you know, you're looking for a piece that somebody really wants to put on their wall. Yeah. You know, or somebody kind of, wants to put in a hallway somewhere or yes. a, a corridor. Yeah. Yeah. So um, because I've done a lot of small pieces um, and I was doing that primarily to say, well, you know, people are traveling, so they don't want to oh, have yeah. bulky to travel with. But that is one side of the business. Of you know, course. I, mean, I will probably still continue to do that, but mm -hmm. it is now trying to work on a larger scale. So right. ironically, um, this weekend, I'm supposed to be going to get my supplies and my large canvases. Done. Oh, great. So you're yeah, really... No. On yeah. the verge of the new stage. Yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we'll so I'll, be, I'll have, be looking have, out for those. Yeah, I have a concept in my head, one particular concept that um I've been toying with and and I really want to do it. So so yeah. Oh great. Okay, so we will look out for that. So you have a website that yes. we can um, go to and, and we have do you still have some of your paintings up there as well? Yes. Yes, yeah. um, the yeah. website is um, shereantoinettestudio.com. Yes, okay. So um, C-H-E-R-A-N-T-O-I-N-E-T-T-E-S-T-U-D-I-O. Yes, it's um, one N, not two N's in Antoinette. Antoinette, one N, yeah. Yes, I had to think in there for a minute. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm sure that it's, it's going to be um, quite interesting. How has the Black Lives Matter uh, issue affected you? And I noticed in Barbados that they've had some demonstrations about removing mm -hmm. uh, the statue of Nelson, but mm -hmm. we're just about running out of time. I, it, there's never yeah. enough time as usual. Yeah, this is true. But, is true. <laughs> but um, I'd like to touch on that to see how that has impacted what your thinking is in terms of either your art or your your jewelry um you know some people may think that uh with the black lives matter you know they would say well okay your country that's 98 percent black so you shouldn't really have an issue with black lives matter um uh, that is a bit of an erroneous um yeah. concept an erroneous yeah. statement because within our society we still have some people try to say it's more of a, a class situation than race, than, than the out and out in your face racism that you would see like in the United States or other places. Mm -hmm. But it is still here. Mm -hmm. um, it is a conversation that has started and it will not stop. And I think um, it has caused people to be more aware, you know, uh, we sit and we cringe and see what's happening in the United States. And 
you know, I, it, I understand why it is saying Black Lives Matter, and I understand mm -hmm. I will probably get stick for saying all lives matter. Mm -hmm. But it really, right now, because the Blacks are the ones that are being um, targeted. That's why it's so important. Yes, that's why you know, they have to make that a, distinction. It's important. That's why you have to make that distinction. Exactly. I agree with that. Um, yeah. Ironically, um, you ask how it's affected my thinking and my art. I wouldn't give away the title or anything, but the piece that I'm actually going to be working on is one that is derived in blackness. Oh, really? Okay. And that and, and that is really different for me because I have I personally I have never experienced racism. Mm. I have never been um, said that I can't be in a particular place or at a particular time or don't pick yeah. up that yeah. or don't buy this or you know you don't deserve that and that's never ever happened to me yeah. so to try to bring it home personally mm. um i think is going to be that's very stretch. yeah and it's going to it's going to be very emotional for me when i actually start doing my research doing yeah the piece, you have to dig deep writing. for that yeah. yeah i really have to dig deep for that i know it's something that i should do because i think it will make me a better person Yes. And I think we just um, all need to recognize that we have to be honest with ourselves. Otherwise, mm -hmm. we can't be honest with anyone else. True. And exactly. We have to live our truth. If we don't live our truth, what are we doing? It's a waste of yeah. time, actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's a great point on which to end, as a matter of fact. That, that sends a message right away, right there. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to wrap up that way, but it, it oh, worked perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> because I think that's, that's a very important point to raise. Yes. That, um, mm -hmm. Because I did see an article where a white Barbadian wrote mm -hmm. about her experience, and she acknowledged the white privilege that she experienced. Yes. So yes. it is important for people to recognize. Well, yes. thank you so much. It's been a great pleasure talking with you. Well, thank you. I'm glad we had this opportunity. Again. As yes. usual, it's never enough time, but I'm glad that we had this opportunity. And um, we're going to go to your website. That's uh, shareantoinettestudio.com. Studio. Yes, please. And uh, we will have a good look at some of your work and that we will uh, be, be able to add some of it to our program. So thank, thank you so you. much and stay safe. And you all too. the best with your new project. Okay. Thank you. Thanks and you again. stay safe and keep in touch. Thank you. Will do. Okay, no. You've been All listening right. to my conversation with Cher Antoinette Corbin, who is a Barbadian artist and a writer. She's not done as much writing recently, but look out for her new art. She's going to be coming up with some new pieces and she's got some great jewelry. Thank you so much for joining us again. And Doris Bean, until next time, remember our motto is one people, one culture, one Caribbean, one nation. <laughs>